Forensic Sciences. Forensic Science is the application of a broad spectrum of sciences to answer questions of interest to a legal system. This may be in relation to a crime or a civil action. Every contact leaves a trace. This is the main driving principle behind today's modern forensic science investigations. During the 1930s, the appliance of science to crime detection was only just beginning to emerge as a discipline. Key home office officials were quick to see forensic science as central to their strategy to help tackle the newly developing register of solved and unsolved crime cases. By the mid-1940s, there had been a huge growth in the use of forensic science and in the ability of forensic science to respond to growing demands from police forces. New scientific techniques continued to be developed and deployed to help solve crimes. By the late 1950s, all areas of England and Wales were served by forensic science laboratories. In 1957, a defining case for forensic science was solved. Kenneth Barlow roused his neighbors with the news that his wife had been found unconscious in the bath. Later, through in-depth observations of the body, it was determined that an overdose of insulin had been administered leading to a trial. Kenneth Barlow was subsequently tried for the murder of his wife. Huge advances were made in scientific techniques in the 1960s, with the most notable being the analysis of body fluids and the use of electrophoresis. Electrophoresis is the motion of dispersed particles relative to a fluid under the influence of a spatially uniform electric field. It is ultimately caused by the presence of a charged interface between the particle surface and the surrounding fluid. Gel electrophoresis refers to using a gel as an anti-convective medium or a sieving medium during electrophoresis. It is most commonly used for separation of biological macromolecules such as proteins. It can also be used for separation of nanoparticles. It refers to the movement of a charged particle in an electrical field. Gel electrophoresis is used in forensics, molecular biology, genetics, microbiology and biochemistry. The results can be analyzed quantitatively by visualizing the gel with UV light and a gel imaging device. The image is recorded with a computer operated camera and the intensity of the band or spot of interest is measured and compared against standard or markers loaded on the same gel. The measurement and analysis are mostly done with specialized software. Depending on the type of analysis being performed, other techniques are often implemented in conjunction with the results of gel electrophoresis, providing a wide range of field-specific applications. In the case of nucleic acids, the direction of migration from negative to positive electrodes is due to the naturally occurring negative charge carried by their sugar phosphate backbone. Double-stranded DNA fragments naturally behave as long rods, so their migration through the gel is relative to their size for cyclic fragments, their radius of gyration. Single-stranded DNA or RNA tend to fall into molecules with complex shapes and migrate through the gel in a complicated manner, 
based on their tertiary structure. Therefore, agents that disrupt the hydrogen bonds such as sodium hydroxide or formamide are used to denature the nucleic acids and cause them to behave as long rods again. Gel electrophoresis or large DNA or RNA is usually done by agarose gel electrophoresis. Proteins unlike nucleic acids can have varying charges and complex shapes. Therefore, they may not migrate into the polyacrylamide gel at similar rates or at all when placing a negative to positive EMF on the sample. Proteins therefore are usually denatured in the presence of a detergent such as sodium dodecyl sulfate or sodium dodecyl phosphate SDS or SDP that coats the protein with a negative charge. Since denatured proteins act like long rods instead of having a complex tertiary shape, the rate at which the resulting SDS coated protein migrate in the gel is relative only to its size and not its charge or shape. The Metropolitan Laboratory Director remarked many cases have occurred where stains of semen or saliva are being found to have originated from non-secretors. This has stimulated research in the laboratory and for the first time we are in a position to give evidence as to the blood grouping of these non-secretors and have done so in court. A significant advance. During the 1970s, a number of custom-built forensic science laboratories were established. Measurement of blood alcohol became a key factor following the earlier introduction of the Road Safety Act. Resources were developed to deal with over 10,000 analyses per laboratory per year. One laboratory was able to handle around 20 samples per hour. The mid-1980s saw one of the most significant milestones of all time in the field of forensic science. The development of DNA profiling. DNA profiling or genetic fingerprinting is a technique employed by forensic scientists to assist in the identification of individuals by their respective DNA profiles. DNA profiles are encrypted sets of numbers that reflect a person's DNA makeup, which can also be used as the person's identifier. The process of DNA profiling begins with a sample of an individual's DNA, typically called a reference sample. The most desirable method of collecting a reference sample is use of a buccal swab as this reduces the possibility of contamination. DNA isolation is a routine procedure to collect DNA for subsequent molecular or forensic analysis. There are three basic and one optional step in DNA extraction. Breaking the cells open, commonly referred to as cell disruption or cell lysis, to expose the DNA within. This is commonly achieved by grinding or sonicating the sample. Removing membrane lipids by adding a detergent. Removing proteins by adding an enzyme protease. Optional but almost always done. Precipitating the DNA with an alcohol, usually ice cold ethanol or isopropanol. Since DNA is insoluble in these alcohols, it will aggregate together, giving a pellet upon centrifugation. This step also removes alcohol soluble salt. Even before the initiative to set up the UK National DNA Database in 1995, the Forensic Science Service had a rolling five-year strategy for the development. 
validation and implement of DNA technologies. In 1992, Muriel Harvey was brutally murdered. Holding DNA forensic evidence on an early DNA database, a subsequent attack on hotel worker Sandra Parkinson in 1994 was later linked to the Harvey murder. With DNA evidence starting to gather momentum, Alan Connor was found hanging from a tree with a suicide note beneath him. DNA from blood and semen samples confirmed Connor was linked to both murders. In 1995, the use of blood grouping and DNA in an intelligence-led screen of suspects in a local area helped solve the savage murder of schoolgirl Naomi Smith. Hundreds of young men were asked to come forward and provide their DNA samples for profiling and it resulted in a match with Edwin Hopkins who was later sentenced to life imprisonment. As we move into the new centum, further forensic methods are continually being developed and implemented. More and more discriminating power is possible through new DNA analysis and interpretation techniques. The Forensic Science Service FSS, is a government-owned company in the United Kingdom which provides forensic science services to the police forces and government agencies of England and Wales as well as other countries and the forensic science service has played massive roles in investigating major disasters like the London bombings the Asian tsunami and America's 9-11 atrocity Fiber and DNA evidence proved crucial in the investigation of the M25 rapist Antoni Imelia. In the biggest linked police inquiry since the hunt for the Yorkshire Ripper, Imelia was sentenced to life in 2004 after being convicted of a series of rapes over a 12-month period. Fiber evidence was found in all eight assaults. This, along with the DNA, was vital in showing a link between Emilia and the attacks. With a strong commitment to research and development, further innovations to help solve more and more crimes are just around the corner.